Hi, Mr. Kevanu. Hi, sir. Hi, Epson and Martha. This is the fifth lesson in our series on AS level biology, which is produced for grade 12 learners and anybody else who is interested. Today, we are discussing biodiversity. Please get your pens and a notebook ready, as I will ask you to answer some questions at the end of this lesson, as I always do. I can tell you that an estimated one-fifth of all known species of mammals, birds and plants in the world are in Africa. At the end of this program, learners should be able to define the terms ecosystem and niche, explain that biodiversity can be assessed at different levels, namely number and range of different ecosystems and habitats, number of species and their relative abundance, genetic variation within each species. So, since you have a pretty good idea what biodiversity is, Martha, please define it for us. Biodiversity is a range of variation found among microorganisms, plants, fungi, and animals. In other words, it is the variety of life found in a place on Earth. That's correct. Actually, I must warn you that a large part of our lesson today requires us to get some terms and definitions under the belt. The next definition is ecology. Epson? Ecology is the branch of biology which studies living organisms in relation to one another and to their physical environment. In other words, it is the study of the interrelationship between living organisms and their physical environment. Right, and I've heard you mention organisms. What is an organism? An organism is an individual living thing. Okay, now I'll give you a definition out of the goodness of my heart. What is a population? A population is a group of individuals belonging to one species living in an area. Last one. What is a community in biology? Community is populations of different species that interact with one another and live in a common area at a particular point in time. Okay, thanks guys. Now let's talk about ecosystems. An ecosystem is any geographic area with all the living organisms present there and the non-living parts of this physical environment. It even includes the movement and storage of energy and matter through the activities of living organisms in that area. We can say that a single ecosystem includes the community of living organisms as well as the physical components of an environment such as water, soil and climate. So, an ecosystem is a community of living organisms that coexist with the non-living components of their environment and they all interact as a system. But we are not done. We listed a few terms that needs to be explained. Let's imagine that you have a small pond in your backyard. In it, you have a range of things living together from microorganisms to insects and plants. Question, do they need each other? Yes, they do, because all living things depend on the non-living things such as water, sunlight, temperature, and the nutrients in the water. You are right, Epson. And all those organisms that you mentioned, plus even the atmospheric pressure on the pond and the turbulence in the pond, caused by fish swimming or the wind, all of these elements help somebody in that system in some way. These are the components of that ecosystem. We call the living components of the ecosystem the biotic components. You know most already, bio refers to life. So 
the biotic or living components of an ecosystem include primary producers. These are those plants that those other organisms feed on, right? Right. There are five biotic components in an ecosystem. Beside primary producers, there are also herbivores. Yep. Plant eaters. I was right. Like goats and deer. So you can easily guess the rest. You are carnivores. Meat eaters, which feed on the plant eaters. Omnivores. Which feed on both plants and animals. So omnivores eat primary producers and herbivores. And then there's detritivores. That one, I do not know. Detritivores feed on dead organic material like decomposing plant and animal parts, and even fecal matter, meaning the waste of animals. Ah, like dung beetles. Yes, dung beetles, earthworms, and all other scavengers. These detritivores, the word comes from detritus, which means debris. Waste or rubbish, they play a hugely vital role in ecosystems. So, the abiotic or non-living components of an ecosystem are sunlight, temperature, precipitation or rain, water or moisture, and soil or water chemistry. Now you know the biotic and abiotic components of an ecosystem. These living and non-living, which are biotic and abiotic factors, are linked together through nutrient cycles and energy flows. Energy flows? That sounds like Japanese Feng Shui or New Age theories. Not at all, Martha. Energy is simply that which enables all living beings to function and do work. We saw that all the living components in the ecosystem feed, right? Why do they feed? Because they need energy. Right. So the energy in plants flow into the herbivores that eat the plants and from there into carnivores that eat herbivores and so on. It looks to me like the only one that does not get its energy for free is the plant. Where does it get its energy from? <laughs> That's the question I was waiting for. Thanks, Epson. You are right. The plant has to make its food itself. That is why it has the fancy name of primary producer, to give recognition to its role as working very hard to make food for the world. Plants make their own food through the process of photosynthesis, and that is how energy enters the ecosystem. Wow, everything is wonderfully made. So true. So energy enters the system through photosynthesis by the plant. And this energy is incorporated into plant tissues. Animals now feed on plants and on one another. And in this way, they play an important role in the movement of matter and energy through the ecosystem. They also influence the movement of plant and microbial biomass present. There you work us with another difficult word again. <laughs> you mean biomass? Biomass is the organic material that comes from plants and animals, and it is a renewable source of energy. By breaking down dead organic matter, decomposers release carbon back to the atmosphere and facilitate nutrient cycling by converting the nutrients stored in dead biomass back to a form that can be readily used again by plants and other microbes. Yeah, the good old... The treaty voice, was it? The clean uppers? Yes, mother. Those dear valued detritivores whose function is to decompose and break down dead organic matter. And by so doing, releasing carbon back into the atmosphere. The cycle is completed. What? Are we done? No, there are two more terms we should discuss. Genes and niche. A gene is a unit of inherited material. An organism's collection of genes determines what organisms it is, what it looks like, and often also how it behaves. 
okay. And niche? It sounds like a French word. Yes, I think so too. A niche, according to the dictionary, is a place, a position, a function, or a role. Okay, back to biology. The niche of an organism is the functional role that it plays within an ecosystem. And this role is determined by the biotic factors, the living features such as animals, plants, and fungi, as well as the abiotic factors, which, as you already know, are the non-living environmental features, such as sunlight, water availability, and weather, as well as resources such as food and other nutrients. Let me think of a practical example. Um, like, you know, when resources are plentiful, a population grows, although by growing, the population provides more resources for predators. Think of this example again while I explain the niche. There were good rains, so the veld is green. The springbok were fat and had many young ones. So the lions are happy because the meat to hunt is plentiful too. The niche of an organism in the ecosystem depends on how it responds to the distribution and abundance of the abiotic factors and its impact on those factors. A niche comprises of habitat in which the organism lives, the organism's activity pattern, which is the period of time when it is active, and the resources it gets from the environment. The ecological niche describes the functional position of that organism in its environment. I hope this has made it clearer. And now, my dear learners, only now that you understand the necessary terms with regard to biodiversity can we get to the actual part of the lesson we need to cover. Biodiversity includes all living organisms and non-living things on Earth and their interrelated ecosystems and interactions. Biodiversity is a very broad concept. And when we assess it, meaning in order to evaluate, for example, how healthy a state the biodiversity is in, we assess it on three levels. We assess its ecosystem diversity, which means how broad and diverse is its ecosystems, its species diversity, which means how much variety is in its species in that ecosystem, and then its genetic diversity, meaning how rich and plentiful its genetic pool is. See if you guys have it. The first level that we assess is ecosystem diversity. What is this? Ecosystem diversity refers to the amount, the range of different ecosystems and habitats in an area. In other words, it is all the different habitats, biological communities, ecological processes, and variation within individual ecosystems. It is a mouthful, I must admit. The best is just to understand it. Understanding is better than memorizing. What is species diversity, Epson? Species diversity refers to the variety and their relative abundance in an ecosystem. It also relates to all the differences within and between populations of species. That's right. And finally, what is genetic diversity? Genetic diversity refers to the genetic variation within the species. It is all the different genes contained in all individual plants, animals, fungi, and microorganisms, both within a species and between different species. Lenas, this ends our biology radio series on ecology and today's lesson on biodiversity. Let's recap what we have learned today. An ecosystem is a self-contained area of any size in which a living, biotic organisms and their physical non-living, abiotic environment 
interact with one another. A niche is the role or function of an organism or species in an ecosystem. Biodiversity is usually explored at three levels, which work together to create the complexity of life on Earth. Genetic diversity deals with the variations in ecosystems within a geographical location. Species diversity refers to the variety and their relative abundance within an ecosystem. Ecosystem diversity refers to the amount, the range of different ecosystems and habitats in an area. You can now answer the following questions in your notebook. 1. Explain the meaning of the following terms. A. Biodiversity B. Community C. Population D. Species E. Ecology F. Ecosystem and G. Niche Question 2. List and explain the three levels of biodiversity. As this was our final lesson, let me say my thank yous. Thank you Dr. Lena Lahia Tileni Nipandulwa, who first developed these lessons, and those on the NAMCOL team who improved on the lessons under guidance of our program developer in charge of curriculum and materials development, Mrs. Estantinta. Our script editor is Lynette Smith. Please remember, Namcol has many more radio lessons that can help you brush up on exciting school topics in your grade. Check out our website www.youtube.com forward slash c forward slash namcol ed1. All that's left for me to say is all the best for your exams, guys. This lesson is produced by Namcol with funding from the Ministry of Education, Arts and Culture.